Hey team, welcome to Starcom The Unknown Sector, where we're gonna go ahead and jump right on into things. Last game I played was kind of fun, I enjoy these top-down shenanigans. SCS Vessel Atlas, Commander of this guy, First Officer Octavia. Priority medium redacted for clearance. A service ship departing Mia Station struck debris and sustained moderate damage. Sensor logs show a debris field and damaged cargo holder in captured orbit. Classified section redacted was needed at Merope and unable to investigate. Atlas is ordered to investigate and determine if debris presents an ongoing danger. Weird. Is it orienting to the cursor or not? You can review the mission details as well as other ship information in the ship's console. I'm super confused because when I put it over a menu, it's like, hey, I'm going to go that way. I'm going to turn that. My torch cursor, why? Disable. And we're headed towards this doodad over here. I like the fact that they added a plasma auto fire thing. We're closing in on the vessel. Looks like there are several dozen containers loose. I suggest we approach them with caution until we know what's in them. This does seem like a wise idea, generally speaking. Or we could just start blasting. Alongside the disabled vessel, Atlas downloads the cargo manifest declaration. Degraded Xenium is dangerous stuff. We should try to destroy the loose containers carefully. Cargo contents, miscellaneous waste collected from regional Starcom bases include abandoned personal effects, growing soil with heavy metal contaminants, non-recoverable technical equipment, deteriorating xenium from experiments, classified, extremely volatile. We can destroy the plasma containers with our plasma cannons. Again, I suggest keeping as much distance as possible. Yeah, see, it's, it's, it's an auto blast for me. I love it. Lazy mode blast and activated. I'm getting a priority emergency bacon on the Starcom open hyperwave. It's from Mia Station. They're asking any nearby ships to report immediately. Looks like this cleanup operation will have to wait. Now you can control click and do autopilot. You can control click and set. Oh, you can set it with the icons. That's neat. I like that. I like that. Bigly. Bigly like that. Press X to hail the Mia station. Thank you for responding to our priority message. Normally this would go through Starcom Fleet HQ, but we have an urgent situation. We received an emergency bacon. 
from our outpost on the other side of the quantum wormhole. They must have a cr critical emergency. I need you to activate the two nearby neutrino generators that will expand the wormhole large enough for us to get through to them. I know you haven't been briefed on this, but our support ship was damaged by debris and is en route to Marope for repairs. Any questions? I have a few questions. I'm not surprised. This project is classified for reasons I can't get into. But I can't order you to help us, so I'll tell you what I can. What's a quantum wormhole, and where does it lead? It's a primordial wormhole that formed during our universe's inflationary epoch. Until recently, they were a theoretical solution to certain cosmological models. We believe that if any exist, they would have collapsed billions of years ago. Then we discovered this one. As for where it leads, I can't say, partly because Starcom Defense Division has classified the information, but also because I don't actually know. Why the secrecy? The reasons for this project being classified are also classified, I'm afraid. Frankly, I think the Defense Division haven't had a major project under their control in a while, and it's gone to their head. Is there anything that you can tell us? According to early research papers, the wormhole may lead us to a universe that was separated from ours during the early expansion of the universe. We sent Seleno Station through a month ago, and they have begun to study the region. It takes a huge amount of energy to expand the wormhole large enough to send ships through, so normally we only expand it for scheduled supply runs. They do have a way of sending a very low bandwidth signal through in case of emergencies. And that's what we received. I'll be able to tell you more once the wormhole's expanded and you've been given clearance. All right. Let the shenanigans begin. Activating the beam of doom. That's one of the stabler, stabilizers. That thing is putting out a huge amount of energy. I'm reading over, over 800 terawatts. Helm control lost. Uh-oh. That shockwave knocked out our bridge control. I'm trying to restart our engines. Oh, you don't look friendly. All black and red. And since you're blasting missiles and pew pews already, I'm thinking you're not friendly. What? What the fleck? Whoever or whatever that is just punched a hole through Mia Station like their neutronium hull was aluminum. Rerouting helm control to the auxiliary. Just a few more seconds. No! Turn the ship! Give me full power! Oh, uh, we got wormholed. Well, all right then. Sensors show that the wormhole field holding, or the field holding the wormhole open, is collapsing. And down she goes. Gravimetric scans show the wormhole is still th still there, but it collapsed down to Planck scale. I've detected a Starcom bacon on our scanners. I've marked the position on your HUD. This must be the station that the Mia commander mentioned. We should make contact with them and let them know what has happened. All right. You can always refer back to anything I've said in the ship's log. Welcome to Seleno Station, Commander. I'm assuming your appearance means that Mia picked up our emergency bacon, and I hope the atlas is just the very small tip 
of a much larger spear of reinforcements coming soon. Hey, hey. All right. It's because she's small doesn't mean she can't get work done. Not exactly, no. That sounds ominous. Go on. Fill the Commodore in on what has happened. That's very alarming. The reason we sent the emergency bacon is that recently we've come under attack by vessels of unknown origin. We're calling them Red Raiders based on their markings for lack of any other information. Now you're telling me there's another threat that's cut us off from support. For now, there doesn't seem to be anything that can be done about Mia Station or the ship that destroyed it. But we can deal with the ships that have been attacking us. They're not terribly powerful, and Seleno's guns have been able to keep them at bay. We have research. We have a research outpost under development on an inner planet. The only other support ship on this side of the wormhole is out of comms range. Given these attacks and the lack of imminent reinforcements, I'll need your help evacuating the staff back to the station. Uh, we'll do that. That's what I hoped for. You'll need a survey lander. I've had Lieutenant Milton start making modifications on the Atlas. See him in the shipyard, and then get our people back safe. As poor Commodore Yu's orders, I've given, gotten the Atlas a bit more combat ready. It still needs a survey lander. Select utilities from the module category list, and then click to drag the lander. I guess you fit right in there, don't you? Okay. Good. Atlas can now conduct planetary survey landings. You should feel free to experiment with different ship designs. We'll have a, we have a lossless rep reclamator so you won't lose any resources just drag a module off the ship to remove or reposition it you can rotate a module prior to re to placement by pressing a and d asymmetric models can be mirrored by pressing x fair enough lieutenant milton what's up salutations commander what can i do for you what can you tell me about the ships that destroyed Mia Station? After reviewing your logs of the incident, I can only say that it's way more powerful than anything we could build. Mia has, or rather had, neutronium reinforced plating. Even directed antimatter should have taken longer to get through. I want to go over sh design. That's a pretty big topic. What area in particular? This universe seems dangerous. How do I keep my ship from being destroyed? An understandable goal? Damage taken by any of the ship's modules decreases their efficacy and weakens the overall integrity of your hull. If that gets too low, your ship will experience total hull collapse, which is as bad as it sounds. This can also happen if your bridge takes too much damage. This can be prevented with bigger and better modules, but there are two types of modules that are specifically designed to protect you. The first is directional deflectors placed along the outer hull of the ship. They substantially reduce directed damage. The second are bulkhead reinforcements. These modules have high health, but also reinforce their neighbors, reducing the damage taken. This stacks, although with diminishing effects. A module that connects to bulkheads on four sides will be better protected than one that connects on only one side. Energy systems. Your bridge has a small generator built-in reactor that provides some power generation and reserves. Beyond that, installing a reactor module will generate more power. You can also install batteries, which store excess energy. This can be useful if you need an energy, a lot of energy in a short period of time. How big of a ship can I build? Your ship's class and maximum size is primarily determined by its bridge, although some technologies can modify this. You've probably noticed that modules come in different sizes as measured in hexes. A scout class ship can only have about two dozen. Tips for planning. Resources are pretty tight here, even more so than we're even more so now that we're cut off from Starcom space. 
If you set the shipyard to design mode, you'll be able to design the ship you want, even if you can't afford to build it now. You can then save the design as a blueprint. This also lets you set it as a design goal. If you find any faction that's willing to trade with you, you'll see exactly how many resources you need when trading with them. Anything else to consider? High energy modules like plasma turrets and more powerful engines generate a lot of heat. They become somewhat less efficient when very hot. Not so inefficient they don't work, but you'll get lower fire rate, less thrust, etc. Worst case scenario, you'll have about a 20% reduction in efficacy. You can minimize this by spreading high energy modules out on your ship, or even better, leaving open spaces next to them so they can radiate into the vacuum. There's a bit of a trade-off between letting your modules release heat quickly and not leaving them too exposed to hostile fire. This becomes more of an issue with more advanced modules that consume more energy for their size. All right, so we got our basic tutorial of shipbuilding down. Let me get in here real quick. Yeah, I'm going to have to play around with that later. Um, for now, can we add? Oh, shit. I broke the ship. Uh-oh. 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 Um. Build help. I broke your design. Kind of forget how it was. Is that it? Close? I don't remember. Shit. Oh, I'm in planning mode. No wonder. I'm like, why is it just letting me eat all these resources? That's weird. I feel like I missed something. Eh, whatever, it's not critical. Let's head over and pick them up. So slow. I say that's not a combat cue if I've ever heard one, right? Hostile ships detected, weapons ready. Hmm. I made a mistake, I think, maybe. I put the auto fire on the left mouse click. Oh, you want to play this way? Okay, we can ram, that's fine. We can play the ramming game. I think Selena's got this covered. Which is good, because I sure as shit didn't. Scan everything. 
The upper atmosphere of this planet is putting on quite a light show, but well outside the visual spectrum in the far UV range. This is this reveals some unusual aspects of solar radiation. What the hell's this random blank hallway shit? ground team is disappointed to abandon the outpost. They had been excavating the ruins of a civilization during a late period of the Fallen Empire. The team had just uncovered an artifact with markings similar to the great structure in space near Seleno. But they very quickly and professionally evacuated the object and vital materials to the lander. Have the team returned to the ship? The team is eager to learn more about the artifact they found. You can order an analysis from the cargo tab of the ship display. Device with alien markings the outpost team recently uncovered. This device transforms geometric information from Euclidean space to an esoteric representation of warp space. Maybe a navigational device. Well done. Given our shortage of Starcom vessels here, you and your ship will need to take on an outsized role for your experience. Until Starcom reopens the wormhole and sends reinforcements, establishing an outpost is a lower priority than strengthening our defense. I am authorizing you to make full use of the resources recovered from the outpost to outfit Atlas. I'll talk to our research chief about getting you access to the lab as well. Unless there's anything else, I'll brief you on the next moves after you've had a chance to upgrade Atlas. I got some questions, just a few. I'm not surprised. I may not have the answers, but I'll do my best. Why is the wormhole universe classified? That's a fair question. A whole new universe is a major discovery. We should want all star comm divisions, as well as the civilian sectors, studying this space. There was a topic, or there was a lot of arguing among the division heads on the topic. The final decision, as I've been informed, was that if the initial two-year research phase didn't uncover any serious threats here, Starcom would make a general announcement and expand exploration. I suspect recent events might change that timeline. What can you tell me about these Red Raiders? That Commodore U dropped the ball calling them Red Raiders. We should have called them Rouge Rogues. Okay, obviously, but besides that. Besides that, they're technologically a bit behind Starcom. I'm confident Seleno can hold them off, unless they come at us with bigger ships or much bigger numbers. It seems unlikely they were made by whoever destroyed Mia Station. Dr. Rama. I am Dr. Rama. I'm the head of Seleno Research Projects. We've been spending the past month studying the nearby artifact and looking for clues to its operation on nearby planets. Commodore Yu has just notified me that for defense reasons, we're redirecting our priorities and I'm to place my lab at your disposal. Incidentally, that's a figure of speech. You are not to break anything. Why do you think I might break something? I reviewed the Atlas logs. Let me say there have been a lot of explosions around you. Hey, some of those explosions were direct, not weren't directly caused by us. There have been zero explosions in this lab, and I want to keep it that way. Given my new directives, the objective, un the object uncovered, given to given up. Wow, given my new directives. The object uncovered has given us some research data you can put to work. If you'll meet me in the lab, I can educate you on our facilities. Oh, good old researchy bits. This interface shows the research technologies available. 
Use it to direct our computer's research. I recommend at least researching Turbo Thrust. It'll speed up your exploration significantly. Turbo Thrust in. Impressive. You didn't break anything. Tractor beam, sensor calibrations, a whole bunch of question marks. Okie dokie. Thermal analysis, entropic shunts, module hardening, decreases the performance penalty of damaged modules. All right. If Atlas is one of our only vessels in this space, you'll need a full command crew for maximum efficiency and to conduct planetary surveys. Some, some of the team members you evacuated from the outpost have volunteered. They've added, they've been added to your crew roster, which you can review at any time. They're admittedly a bit green, but I think with some experience, they'll be officer material in no time. Speaking of experience, we've detected some ship movement around a nearby gas giant. There also appears to be some activity on the surface of one of its moons. I want you to check it out. The ships have similar energy readings as the Red Raiders, so use those resources to get the Atlas ready for combat. All right, let me see what I can do here. We got, we got another blaster. We a blasting, boys. We blast. We're blasting. All right. Okay, put this here just to kind of shield the the guns a little bit. I don't know. Add more HP. That's the important part, right? Was this crew? Triton, Kepler, Rhea, Pyrrhic, Cygnus, Lee, and Galice. All have looks like a specialization skill and an off skill. Xenoculture. What is this? Study of an alien language, culture and thought. Improves tactical skill checks and increases the likelihood of related insights during anomaly surveys. Every crew member with at least one tactics increases plasma turret accuracy by 10% and plasma fire rate by 5%. Additional skills provide diminishing returns. Each command crew member with at least one observation increases maximum viewport range. So the detection range. Okay, so they all have their own little thingamajiggles. Interesting. Okay, off we go to do something. Turbo thrust. E to lock on. Well, I think I will probably not lock it on, but it looks like the autopilot uses it automatically. And then when I want to go to combat mode, I just do that. Combat speed and exploration speed. Fair enough. You can view, you can get a wider view of known objects, including planets, on our navigational map. Boop, boop. I hear combat cues. Let's go. Very nice.
Leave my ship to repair. We'll come over to the star, see if there's anything special about it. Doubtful. Wormhole Gateway. Now we got a base or something here. All right. That's right, we can strip and rip ships, so we should aim for that. Damage report, navigation sensors offline. Fair enough. Okay, so always aim for the guns. This programmable nanite superfluid has a very short half-life, but our crew can make use of it to effect quick repairs. Raider coil device. An energy coil found in the debris of one of the Raider ships. It's a warp telemetry bacon, probably used to coordinate ship movements from a central location. The anomaly is a partial buried ring shaped artifact roughly 100 meters in diameter. While ship, while technologically advanced, the structure shows signs of designs in progress, suggesting that this was an experimental device or prototype. The rocks and dirt nearby have undergone zero oxidation, so it was excavated quite recently. Cadet Galice observes that while the structure is much too large to transport, it has gold connectors leading to what appear to be data storage components. If provided with power, it might be possible to access the data. Now uh, we got the skill checks and rolls. Oof, he got hurt. A member of the command crew has been injured in action. They'll recover with time, but will be operating at reduced skill until they're fully healed. The process turns out to be surprisingly tricky. The artifact reacts to energy from the lander in unexpected ways. While trying to compensate for the unpredictable fluctuations, a sudden surge badly burns Cadet Galice. Despite their injuries, they were able to capture most of the artifact's data before a feedback loop fried the alien's device. Crew gained one XP. The data recovered from the buried ring is an exotic Calm down. Shoving logs out the way before I can read them. The data recovered from the buried ring is an exotic mathematical description of warp space, possibly a coordinate system. There's a natural layer of ethrene not far from the planet's core. Unfortunately, the lander would be crushed far above that depth. I don't know what ethrene is used for, but it sounds important. Importante. This must be the artifact Dr. Rama talked about. Whoever built this must have adva must have very advanced engineering abilities. I've had an opportunity to examine the object our outpost team found. As I suspected, the nearby artifact is a wormhole generator. The object we found allows us to communicate with it. The last piece of the puzzle I deduced from your team's investigation of the buried ring. Coordinates are encoded as mathematical formula describing warp space. Knowing the particular formula for locating or a location acts as kind of a key. My hypothesis is that if we input this formula into the wormhole generator, it will create a wormhole to a distant point in space. We, meaning you, should test this hypothesis by activating the nearby artifact and entering its wormhole. 
And at that point, will another gateway be gateway we can use? Will there be another gateway we can use to return? Best case scenario, yes. Worst case scenario, you'll end up light years away and have to trek back in normal space. And I'll have the lab back to myself. Be sure to pack some extra food. This hoe. This assassin bitch. The archaeological team has reported their findings to me. The nearby ring artifact that Dr. Rama says can be used as a transport gateway was built by an entity or a culture referred to as the Remnants. Their technology may aid us in reopening the wormhole from our side. In any event, it is far in advance of anything we have. Investigating the endpoint of this gateway, if you can find the source of these Red Raider ships, neutralize them if possible. But your top priority is to find any similar remnant artifacts or technology. Sure, into the unknown. Can't argue with that. We don't really have anything that we can plug into her at the moment, so let's go. I've marked the coordinates, the equation point to on our map. Now let's see if that gateway will take us there. It'll be a long walk in normal space. Some locations on the star map may require that you zoom out. You can optionally... God damn it! The gateway projected us through space-time topology like the wormhole that pulled us into this universe. We essentially solved an equation that redefined the relationship between two points in space. Amazing! Well, I hear combat cues, but I don't see any raiders as of yet. There you are. Oh, it's a bigger one. Oh shit, it's got bigger guns too. And it's brought little friends along with it. We're just gonna make a ramming ship at this rate, shit. Blastin' boys, we blastin'. Good shit. These appear to be the same ships we encountered near Selena. Commodore Yu wants us to investigate their source. Sounds like there's more somewhere around. Highlight investigated. I like it. This is doodad. Looks like a highway. Looks like this structure is generating a local negative Higgs field. Starcom has experimented with using this principle for long distance travel, but we haven't solved the disintegration problem. The disintegration problem, she says. I think I'll pass. Oh look, more assholes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll 4v1 you, it's fine. Jeez. It 
Still combat music? Alright. We need more repair ability. The anomaly is a titanium crash sphere designed to slow and protect a small survival capsule during an emergency landing. It worked perfectly in this case, but the occupant must have sustained critical injuries prior to ejection. The structure expands on ejection into an optimal geometry for both dissipating friction heat and absorbing impact energy. The body has been reduced to little more than a skeleton by local microfauna, so all the team is able to ascertain is that they were a biped with two arm-like appendages and three ocular cavities. The distress beacon stopped broadcasting some time ago, but some snippets of the message it recovered is recovered by the Universal Translator. Devout attack group forced to avoid retrace drone production site. Drone production site, you say? This star has a greater metallicity than I would expect to find in a population one group. Stellar evolution must behave differently in this universe. How long is the ship gonna be on fire? Alright, so if I remember correctly, the guns are there. So, we wanna come at this bitch blasting. You know what? I'm also going to change. That key to Alpha 2, delete fixed guns. Until we get them at least. Yeah, you ain't got no guns, you can't hurt me anymore, bitch. Question mark, question mark. There's little of interest on this methane-choked planet. The most advanced life form is a grass-like fungus. But sometime in the last few centuries, someone fought over this wet rock, as demonstrated by the half-sunken gunship. While nature has stripped away many of its resources, some turrets still have their yttrium capacitors. Well, I guess the only thing left to do is go down the highways of disintegration and see if maybe we don't disintegrate. Alright, we didn't disintegrate. Guess whoever made these accelerators solved the disintegration problem, which is always a positive. I'd rather not disintegrate. Be a quick quick end to the journey. Combat queue. You can always tell, right? A destroyer. Okay. Not sure how I feel about that. Took out half of my health bar. Holy shit.
This thing's got torn apart and it's still about to beat my ass. Jeez. Destroyers be ridiculous. Don't even have the navigation sensors at the moment. Whooped my ass so hard it made me blind. High atop a volcanic peak, dense silver deposits lie a few hundred meters below the surface. There's no doubt the team will be able to access some, although how much of the deepest veins they can reach depends on the skillful reading of the lander's seismograph. Lieutenant Pyrrhix, don't let us down. Eh. Lieutenant Pyrrhix compl competently directs the lander's drill to the most accessible deposits, although some of the finer ones crumble during access, reducing the yield a bit. Eh, that's fine. I didn't expect you to get it down with a, what, negative 10% roll. This structure appears to be an intermittently used outpost with cramped living quarters and a communication array. There's nothing really of value, but Cadet Gleese notices that the waste recycler is jammed with a magnetic memory disk. They're able to recover several log messages regarding mineral transfers and one interesting entry. Expect increased raw material orders from both Nimian and Kiernan factions by Unintelligible. I recommend the Unintelligible system, easy access and low profile, not well known, by, uh, known to other Unintelligible. Messages followed by what appears to be another set of gateway coordinates. New mission added to the log. In cruise mode, thrusters will stay engaged. I just like my ship not to be on fire forever. That's all I want. I don't know if that's too much to ask. Combat queue. Assholes incoming. Where are they at? Another destroyer, huh? All right. A cluster of discarded cylinders with curious and bright markings lie next to a portable aluminum broadcast antenna. The antenna, which is solar powered, is still broadcasting. Possible expletive, didn't realize the activation started as soon as the seal was broken. If they're not familiar with guild seals, opening one makes sen some sense to check what you had. But why all? After the first one started glowing, I'd at least think BO4 opening the next one. Second Legion would have known better. I still have the verification report certifying late Fallen Empire. There's probably no market for inert nanites, but I'll bring them with me. I'm not sticking around to disappoint the buyer.
A cylindrical container opened at one end with some interesting decorations. The decorations are connected to an array of interior sensors with a cryptographic network. Possibly a mechanism to visually ensure the contents are not tampered with or replaced. The remains of a fairly recent battle between the Red Raider ships and some unknown victim are scattered over a wide area. Some of the wreckage has been salvaged, but whoever cleaned up either was in a hurry or couldn't haul much. There's a fair amount of valuable resources left. Cadet Pyrrhix notes that several million years ago, this frozen planet experienced an unusual warm period. During this period, a short-lived civilization progressed to the equivalence of our late Iron Age. They were more advanced in some areas, leading to the production of some titanium artifacts, some of which survived till today. Alright, Destroyer, I see you. Oh shit, he's got a scout with him as well. That's not good. Oh, he's got an entire friggin' army with him. So tanky. No fucking shot. What? Another asshole showing up? No thanks. Picked up fixed barrel. An accelerator barrel for a fixed plasma weapon. Part of a fixed plasma weapon, similar to our turrets, but designed for a fixed gun with longer range and more power. If we can find additional parts, we'll be able to research building it ourselves. I don't mind fighting the destroyer or the um, the raider, but both at once. Those fixed guns is kind of nasty. Looks like the raider just left, so I'm okay with that. Showed me his ass at close range. You dumb. You dumb bitch. Oh, I'm dead. He's dead or I'm dead. One of the two. Oof. Close. 
ramming speed was not my friend in that instance. Yeah, I've only picked that up. I'm sure that raider is still around somewhere. I mean, the combat queue is still going. Maybe not. Maybe you're just being an asshole. One ring on the periphery somewhere. This planet has an incredibly strong magnetic field, which, with spikes that reach up to 1.21 Tesla, possibly the result of a highly of highly concentrations of rare earth metal mineral uh, earth metals in the core. words be hard, yo. Alright, well, if they're not gonna come play with me, we're just gonna float over to the question mark. Since we cleared that out. Yeah, I already know about the autopilot. I always check key bindings and controls before I start a game. Come on now. And finally, the combat cue music decided to cease. I've managed to start the tutorial and explore two to three systems. All right, go us. A wildly slow first hour. And we have more assholes. I should probably just explore those planets because I gotta go over that way anyway. Ooh, piece of candy. Perfect. Perfect! Let's get by close enough to scan it. Head to our gateway. Seleno after a little bit of an adventure. I'm going to take a break here, so y'all stay safe out there. Have a good one. We'll be back for more shenanigans in a bit.